Welcome to the Humanities Team Podcast with me, Steve Farrell. Humanities Team is an international spiritual movement whose purpose is to communicate and demonstrate the timeless truth that we are all one with the divine and all life, caring for each other and the world we share so that people's actions reflect this profound understanding within our generation. We believe that living this truth is essential to resolving the most chronic and acute world challenges and vital to creating a flourishing world of peace, harmony, and happiness. We offer transformative education programs in personal and spiritual development, and we host an annual event called Global Oneness Day. Similar to Earth Day, which galvanized the global environmental movement, Global Oneness Day has become a catalyst for spiritual activism and an integral part of the present-day global oneness movement, which represents a profound new paradigm in human culture. Humanities Team is the only global nonprofit organization working in transformational education. Since we are a nonprofit, there is no focus on growing profits or satisfying shareholders, and 100% of all revenue goes toward our work supporting conscious evolution, planetary awakening, and flourishing at every level of life. If you'd like to learn more about us or want to support our mission directly through donation or volunteering some of your time, please visit us online at humanitiesteam.org. And lastly, if you enjoy this podcast, we'd be grateful if you'd leave us a review. Hey there, welcome everybody uh, to our celebration program on this Friday, August 20th. And as you can see, I'm right here on screen with Jonathan and Andy Goldman. Whoa, the pioneers in sound healing and their dear friends, partners of Humanities Team for a long time. Uh, they're coming to you live from Boulder, Colorado. I'm coming to you live from our studio in Boulder, Colorado. And hey, you guys wanna say hi real quick? <laughs> Oh, hello, Steve, and hello, everyone. We are so thrilled and delighted to be here today. <laughs> Hi, real quick. All right. So I'm going to give these guys a proper introduction. I just wanted right at the top of the show to just uh, to come in and say hi. We're, we're thrilled to be with Jonathan and Andy. They're, again, they're dear personal friends and friends of Humanities mm -hmm. Team. And as I mentioned, they're... Uh, pioneers in sound healing. So is this like the perfect time to be coming in with pioneers in sound healing with all of what's going on in today's world or what? Now, um, uh, our theme here today is the seven secrets of sound healing. So we're gonna get to uh, into this. We're gonna actually look at some video clips and things, uh, some programming developed by Jonathan and Andy that's on the Humanity Stream Plus platform. So we'll go to video clips and things in, in a moment. First, let me just give a proper introduction to Jonathan and Andy Goldman. So they have been great friends and humanities team partners over the years, participating in the Global Oneness Summits and developing other events and programming. Uh, they, as I mentioned just a second ago, they've created uh, new programming that's up now on the Humanity Stream Plus uh, platform. Uh, so we'll go look at that here in a little bit. They encourage and teach people worldwide to get in touch with the healing power of sound something that requires no special tools or equipment, but rather as a natural aspect of who we are. This enables us to shift our reality and radiate and vibrate a higher frequency, a higher frequency that heals worry and opens the door to joyful, joyful living. So again, boy, is, is now the time or what? So uh, a big welcome to Jonathan and Andy. And again, uh, so excited to have you all here with us on today's program. <laughs> oh. Steve, once again, thank you so much. It is our great joy to be here today. What a blessing to be so, with you. We look forward to sharing with you and everyone because this is such an extraordinary time and the use of sound is so amazingly, shall we say, important as well as resonant with everyone's frequency. And Boy, the real is beauty so thing is that we can all work with sound because we all have a voice. And so we have that power within us innately. So, so. Look, yes, we do. So we're going to get to that actually right now. So let me say, uh, Jonathan, uh, as you may know, his dad 
was uh, a pioneer of plastic surgery in New York City. So imagine kind of the outer space he's in uh, in materiality uh, where, where you're launching something like that. Now, and then Jonathan and Andy are pioneers in sound healing. So as we talk about making conscious living pervasive worldwide, you know, hello, <laughs> sound healing is, is one of the, these substantial tools uh, that's here that makes uh, conscious living so, so beautiful. Uh, so let's talk a little bit of just about uh, you all as pioneers, the work that you've done, these programs you've developed. Uh, there's, I know there's so much we could talk all day long, but do you want to just kind of give, give people a little feel for this amazing uh, pioneering work that you've done and are doing today? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start and uh, say that we have uh, been working together for 25 years and I have been in this field for at least 40. And I first of all want to give thanks for the fact that probably about 15 years ago or so, I remember saying to Andy, you know, sound healing is beginning to catch on. I imagine in the next 10 to 20 years, it's going to be somewhere around where yoga was at this time and lo and behold yoga is obviously totally mainstream and sound healing has gotten to the point where i can mention it and people look at me and scratch uh, their head going what <laughs> they begin to understand that you, you can use sound either listening to it or different instruments or particularly as we use working with your voice mostly to shift and change your vibratory field your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, and your spiritual body, all with sound. And particularly, we like to work with self-created sound. Mm. And, and we just, Steve, we feel so blessed that sound has become really so close to being out there in the mainstream and people understand what sound working with sound as a healing modality is and so particularly now at this time where so many of us are very challenged with you know the current culture and so that we are able to share our sound with everyone is a true blessing and a, a true blessing for the world. So uh, let me share now, uh, I mentioned in the introduction, they've been part of the Global Oneness Summit over the years. There's a program they're, uh, they're, they've, uh, they're creating for the Global Oneness Summit this year, 2021's program. There are over 30 panels, over 70 speakers. Well, you're gonna wanna go to globalonenesssummit.org uh, to register for the program. Do you wanna just say you know, 30 seconds about your panel this year? Cause it's quite exciting. I think you've got a couple of them actually. Well, uh, this one particularly, Steve, the one, you know, it's basically, it focuses on using sound and compassion or compassion and sound to create oneness. And really the combination of sound encoded with intentionality, and if the intentionality is creating compassion, which creates oneness. And we have a Tibetan Lama, a very high esteemed, world-renowned Tibetan Lama, a woman who, uh, from England, who has uh, been working in the, uh, sound field for many years and Andy and myself. And Andy, of course, is a uh, holistic psychotherapist. So she really knows so much, you know. But, but Steve, you know, we had Chloe Goodchild and Lama Tashi and of course the two of us and just being able to have the dialogue about compassion and oneness and how we can open up to oneness, you know, has uh, I'm excited for people to be able to to see that when uh, Global Oneness Summit happens in October. Yeah, it's a great uh, thing. And believe it or not, Steve, uh, I didn't mention this on the panel, but the original idea of this came to me 20 years ago when Andy and I were in Mexico, if you like, uh, celebrating our uh, second wedding anniversary. And uh, I had this vision, if you like, this inner voice that said that it's time to create a uh, sort of a, a compassion panel, a compassion conference or whatnot. And uh, I didn't actually manifest it, but it was so interesting. I was, I was telling Chloe and Andy and Lamatashi that they were among, we were all among the people that I, you know, perceived of as being part of this compassion gathering. So how wonderful 
that it should manifest just at the right time and at the right place. And it's going to be really life changing for everyone. So let me come back to uh, Jonathan and Andy. Again, we just looked at their programs. Um, we're going to let's go to a cut now. There's a two minute cut from uh, one of these programs. Again, they loaded three programs to the platform. We're going to go to the seven secrets of sound healing to look at um, a cut from it. And then we're going to come back and talk about it. Here we go. What's the first secret? Mm, okay, secret number one. Everything is vibration. If you check out the basic tenets of the different spiritual traditions on this planet, there's an understanding that light, the universe, and everything is composed of sound. In the beginning was the Word. And the Lord said, let there be light, sound, preceding light. In the Egyptian tradition, the god Thoth would think of an object, speak its name, and bring it into being. In the Vedic tradition, it said, in the beginning, beginning was Brahman, with whom was word, and the word was Brahman. In the Hopi tradition, the spider woman sings a song of creation over the inanimate forms on the planet and gives them life. In the Mayan tradition from Papua the first real men and women are given power solely through the word. In the Orient, the gods and goddesses would hit a gong, blow a giant conch shell bring the universe into being. And yet at the same time, we have our modern physicists saying the same thing, that everything is vibration. Sound is the original creative force. And indeed, I had an experience a couple of years ago when I was uh, doing a presentation at a conference, and uh, there was a very well known quantum physicist by the name of Nishikaku there, one of the major developers of uh, super string theory, if you ever hear that. It's a <clears throat> concept of physics that's sort of way beyond me. And uh, we you know, I introduced myself and I said, I'm not really familiar with your work and you're not really familiar with my work, but I have a feeling we're going to say a lot of similar things. And he kind of looked at me in puzzlement. Then he began, Einstein was wrong. Bohr was wrong. The universe is music. He smiled and continued. So now, sound. I want to talk for a moment to you about sound. Sound travels as a wave. These waves are measured in cycles per second. And scientifically, they're referred to as hertz, abbreviated as HZ, and this is called its frequency, the frequency of something. Slow-moving waves create deep bass-sounding tones. And you can see here, it's a slow-moving wave. It's a slow-moving wave. Fast moving waves create high frontal sounding. Like this, except you know, even higher. <laughs> okay, everything is vibration. Key point. Yeah, do you all want to? And there are seven secrets. We just looked at the first secret. Uh, so, this is, um, you know, in, inside of the world of sound healing, of course, this is just the, the 101 uh, kind of discussion, but. Let's talk about this a little bit because this is, you know, this is very real. It's like understanding gravity. You know, if we're going to live life, boy, let's understand the, the one oh ones to, uh, to, to, to life, which includes things like that we're everything is vibration. Well, Steve, if I can just say that uh, I made a reference to a, a physicist by the name of Mishu Kaku. Uh, and I've seen him a lot of times. In fact, I might have even seen him on television yesterday, believe it or not. But um, more recently, uh, before that, not, not before yesterday, he was act actually uh, on a television talk show talking about his uh, latest book, which is called The God Equation, which broke down to just what I said, that basically the latest thing in quantum physics is the concept 
of string theory. And the string theory is that everything in the universe is the result of multiple harmonically related frequencies that we could perceive as being sound. So I love that. Uh, I really feel that what has happened is that uh, planetary global consciousness is now coming up to point and beginning to really resonate with these uh, these concepts that everything is vibration. And I love it. So yeah, it's the basic phenomena of uh, Sound Healing 101. And yet at the same time, it's mandatory that everyone can understand and know this because uh, once you understand this, then you begin to, if you like, perceive and act a little bit differently in terms of our life. Mm. Well, and you know, Steve, I'm glad you said Sound Healing 101, uh, the seven secrets of sound healing, because it really breaks it down into such understandable terms that just a lay person can begin to incorporate into their life. And, you know, knowing that everything is vibration and everything is frequency and keeping our frequency as positive and loving and compassionate and understanding as possible, we can do this. And, you know, one of the things that was really fun for us when we were looking at this uh, recording uh, was that, wow, this was done actually over at CU, University of Colorado, here in Boulder, and it was a live audience. And so when we watched it, we could actually feel the uh, energy of speaking like in front of these people. It was just great. So I wanted to, to share that. But frequency is everything. Yes, it is. Frequency is everything. And uh, and this is this is such an important point, again, in today's world with with the challenges and worry and stress uh, to just really to to be keeping our frequency up. And of course, when we were in the green room before we came in, we were talking about how, yes, this is, you know, this is where it all starts. If we're going to be of any value to ourself and our household and right now with you all viewers and we're together, we do this, right? It's as simple and as complex as this, where we're just understanding we're energetic beings, you know, that we're vibrational beings and that uh, where through our prayer and meditation and sound healing exercises and walking in nature and even painting, you know, and listening to music, there are many ways that we can stay in this higher frequency where we can then be in, as, as Jonathan uh, and Andy have talked about, be in this place of listening and understanding and compassion and so on. Uh, this, is, this is what conscious living is, right? It's as simple as, and as complex as that. And uh, I mean, the, the, the beautiful thing about it is, is uh, a lot of times as we're talking about this mission of making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, uh, for people that are newer to this whole journey and to consciousness, there's a sense of what do I need to give up? You know, what, what's the sacrifice involved here? And <laughs> the beautiful thing is, is no, <laughs> we're, we're not giving up anything, you know. This is actually the fruitful journey. You know, this, this is where we come into the awareness of what true prosperity is, you know. And yes, that include there's a financial prosperity component, but there's so much more where we're where we energetically are are staying up in this higher frequency of just feeling uh, we, we, we call it divine energy and humanities team, but we could call it cosmic energy or universal energy or energy of love, you know. <laughs> energy of light, energy yes. of life. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. there's so many, so many wonderful things, aren't there, just about where we do the work. Uh, you have an equation you might even want to bring in that's a very simple little equation mm -hmm. that speaks to this, don't you, Jonathan? Well, Steve, thank you, because that equation yes. basically deals with the second secret that we have in the um, Seven Secrets of Sound Healing, and that is that the power of intent. And by the intention, I mean the consciousness that we encode upon really any vibration, but particularly sound. And this first manifested to me back in the 1980s. And um, I created this formula, which was frequency plus intent equals healing, uh, meaning that the sound that we make 
coupled with the intention of the sound brings the outcome. So if it's healing, that's great. If it's love or whatnot, that's great too. But the idea that intention is and should be encoded so much upon the sounds we make, and this includes our voice, and in particular, even when we're speaking. Because we can tell the difference between if somebody says something and their intention, the energy behind it, is not true. And this is very, very important. For example, if we're dealing with the concept of love, if uh, you say, I love you, and you have this real, eh, you know, nasty feeling behind it, it doesn't matter. But if you say, ah, oh, I really love you, wow, you can pick that up, not only in the tonality, but literally in the vibration that is encoded upon the sound. And, and, Steve, when we talk about everything is frequency, which we believe everything is frequency, but intention is absolutely essential. It's as though our thoughts and our intention ride on that sound wave. You know, when we're creating, say, for instance, we're humming. I know you mentioned that earlier. And of course, we've been working a lot with the humming effect. And when we encode that intention of understanding, of compassion, of healing onto whatever sound we're making, whether it's a toning sound, whether it's, you know, speaking to someone, whatever, that intention really is so, so vital to everything as well as the frequency. Just want yeah, a quick add that. Oh, sorry, yeah, please, I just wanted Jonathan. to quickly add that back when this uh, first came out, and I would share with these scientists and doctors, have you ever thought of the importance of intentionality? And Steve, they would look at me like I was a man from another planet, which I well may be. <laughs> but regardless, uh, nowadays you have people like Bruce Lipton doing this wonderful biology of belief, the power of the placebos up there. We've really gotten into the whole quantum aspect of uh, vibration being encoded with sound. So I just give thanks and blessings. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just going to say, and of course, Lynn McTaggart, right, with intention, and, and we could go on and on and on. Their intention is so big and, and something people don't know, uh, and, and I only know because we've become friends and I know about your work, but you were way, way out ahead of all of this intention thing uh, that, that's big and where books exploded on the subject. You came out with your formula, frequency plus intention equals healing. Uh, and people were saying, attention, what the heck is that? You know, uh, and now, sure enough, you know, it's this huge focus out in the world because uh, without intention, it's like getting in a car and just driving in circles. You know, there's no, where, where are we, there's no energetic signature. Where are we going? Uh, but intention is saying, I know where I'm going. It's, there's this vision of where I'm going. And then just riding the flow or the, the, uh, magic blanket of frequency, you know, in that direction mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, how I see it. Uh, so it's a beautiful equation. It's so simple. And, and yeah. when we talk about conscious living, this is, we could stay instead of healing, we could say frequency plus intention equals conscious living, you know, that's, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, wonderful. Thank you for being such, uh, uh, powerful pioneers. Uh, and, and just also you're, you know, there's so much humility in, in you all. You're just such wonderful people. We're uh, just blessed to, to know you all and live near you here in Boulder, Colorado. So, okay, now uh, let me come back to Jonathan and Andy. I know you all wanted to talk a little bit about an experiential exercise, I think, and then you wanted to lead an experiential exercise. And I think it'd be really fun if we did that now and then get to some other things. You know, Steve, when we are talking about sound and frequency and intention, uh, we can talk about it all day long and really begin to integrate it that way. But when you have an experience and you actually feel in your own body, mind and spirit, the effects of working with sound and intention. And so today we thought it would be really kind of fun to just lead the group in, a, you know, a brief sound experience. Experience. And so maybe we'd like to do that now, as Steve was saying. Right, right. Yeah. And we just want to tell you a little bit, though, of a background, because we're going to be working with the hum. And why the heck 
the hum because you know if I've been in this field, man has been in this field, you know, for a long, long time, uh, and we've worked with everything from really sacred uh, Tibetan mantras to kirtans to harmonic sing to different strange intervals to all sorts of different things. Why are we dealing with the hum? And there are two reasons for this. One of them is that we were looking for a sound that everybody could make because we found that in our teachings, sometimes people would like not develop a sound practice because they didn't feel comfortable with their own voice. And while there are wonderful workshops on teaching how to open your voice, we said, okay, is there a sound that is universal that everyone can make? And we looked at each other, we went, hmm, mm. the hum. <laughs> you know, babies hum, the elderly hum, people hum when they're happy. And the thing is, okay, so the hum is a sound that we can make. And as we've found out, it's the most powerful vibroacoustic sound we can actually make. But when we decided to start working with the hum, basically we call it conscious humming because we have a whole protocol in terms of breathing first and, you know, setting our intention. And so it's a very conscious sound practice. And that's what we want to share today. But I want to just uh, suggest that there are actually physiological benefits from humming, that these occur. And actually, we included in our book, The Humming Effect, I just happen to have it here in The Humming <laughs> Effect, we have uh, the first chapter is nothing more or less than peer-reviewed information on the therapeutic benefits of humming, because we figured if people are gonna take the concept of humming seriously, they need to believe something's going on. And some of the benefits are, Andy, take it away. Well, our heart rate is lowered. Our blood pressure is lowered. Melatonin is released. There are so many physiological benefits. The hormone oxytocin, which is the trust hormone is released. And we then, you know, that alone gives us this deep sense of connection and oneness. And also nitric oxide, the molecule nitric oxide is released. And that is an antiviral. And so, you know, if you want to so, say anything. Just as a thought that, yes, they have found that, and there is really data. So this is real. This is not made up. When you hum, Mm, you get it basically vibrates in your nasal cavity and you get the release of nitric oxide and they found that a lot of these nasty critters that um, you know they first encode themselves in our nasal cavity before they go to other parts of the body so if you can basically start humming so there are, for example um, is a condition known as sinusitis and humming is very uh, effective, for example, for treatment of sinusitis and many other conditions. So it's really a therapeutic beneficial thing. And we do it as a, a daily practice, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mostly because bottom line, if you do the exercise that we're going to be doing, and even less, we're, we may do five hums, which is nothing. We normally do mm -hmm. about 25 hums or five minutes worth. But if you do five hums or even less, you will get reduction of your heart rate, your respiration, and your blood pressure at pharmaceutical levels. So you don't have to be taking a pill. You can literally be um, humming for a minute or so, and all of a sudden, the stress, the cortisol, all those things disappear, and you get into a really content state of being. It's wonderful. And, and the, the real beauty, too, of working with sound and working with our own voice with something as simple yet as effective as humming is that that gives us that inner knowing, that inner strength to shift and change our, our levels of stress and to bring in balance. And so even when we are doing something as, uh, we'll probably do three or five hums today in just a moment, but 
after we do the experience, we will then briefly be in silence. And when you are working at home and you're doing a practice with sound, silence is just a very important aspect because it's where the shifts and changes actually begin to occur. So I wanted to just mention that because we'll have the experience today and we'll just be in silence for a few few seconds here today. But just as a thought, that's actually secret number four of the seven secrets of sound healing, that silence is right. golden. Not golden. <laughs> silence is golden. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, yeah. <laughs> it's both golden and golden. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it was actually a huge, you know, I had been in this field for close to uh, 15 years before I came upon mm -hmm. the power of silence. I was so, if you like, enamored with sound that I didn't realize that silence is the yin to the yang of sound. And therefore, it really is necessary once you've made sound to be in silence so that the shift and change, as Andy was saying, can occur. If you're all of a sudden in one frequency and then you change it to, to another frequency, you don't give the sound uh, the ability to make its changes on a cellular level, on a deep level. And just real incidentally, Andy was mentioning that humming is the most powerful vibroacoustic sound we can make. And vibroacoustics is when the sound affects us on a physical level. It goes into us on a physio physical level, affecting us down to our DNA and our cells. There's another way that sound affects us, incidentally, and it's called psychoacoustics. And that's where the sound goes into our ear, into our brain, affecting our heart rate, respiration, and brain waves. So they all work together. And one last little game before we do this. Okay, I'd like you all to just play a game with me for a second. Start to do a hum, and then pinch your nose, okay? So I'm going to do that. And, and the only thing we say in terms of doing a proper hum is you don't constrain yourself, make sure it's in a comfortable range, and you have your lips closed. If you have your lips open, then it's not a hum. So I'm going to close my lips, and I'm going to hum. Do this with me and pinch your nose. Watch what happens. I hope you all experienced this. Steve, did you try this one? It, no you, sound. You, you can't hum if yeah. your nose is... Mm. And we say, okay. If you, and most people go, whoa, I can't believe that. I say, okay, if you didn't know that about humming, mm -hmm. do you think perhaps there are other aspects of hum that you don't know have taken for granted? In other words, and I say, come along with us and let us experience it. So we're going to be doing this brief meditation. Once again, we usually like to do this as a five-minute plus meditation, but we're not going to be doing a five-minute plus meditation or a five-minute plus hum. But uh, with the five-minute plus meditation, we do a whole heart-brain coherence thing, giving gratitude for all that is. But instead, Andy's just going to lead you in a couple of deep breaths so we can do this and then continue. But this is a practice that everyone can do. Mm -hmm. Once you experience this and feel this, you know it's real. Mm -hmm. And once you know it's real, then you'll work with it. And so, Steve, if you'd like, we can go ahead and do that experience now. And what, what I'd like to ask everyone to do is to just close your eyes and begin to focus on your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out and feeling your body relaxing, letting go of anything that is not serving you in this moment. And as you're breathing in and out, begin to feel something that you feel really good about, something that brings a positive, loving energy into your field and breathing in and out in this manner. And now Jonathan will lead us in a series of three to five hums. And we'll just let our breath and our breathing 
hold and support those hums. And just keep breathing in this matter and check yourself out before you make the sound because we're going to ask you to check yourself out after, see if you notice a difference. So now with your eyes closed and just for our intention for this one is just to become aware of what is occurring when we make these conscious hums. So taking a breath in for the first hum. Mm. Mm. just begin to check yourself out. Do you notice any difference? I myself really feel a little lightheaded and quite blissed out. Andy? Mm. And I myself feel a deeper sense of inner balance. So depending on how you feel, we can open our eyes and begin to come back and, and just Remember this moment and how something as simple as humming, having an intention of positivity and love, and a little bit of silence, those ingredients can help to shift and bring us into a balance. And we have to ask our friend Steve, how was that for you, Steve? Oh, that was marvelous. Thank you. Yeah, no, I love that exercise. We, uh, all of us in the humanities team were right there with you, um, feet on the flat on the floor and just really feeling into those higher uh, vibrational states with that humming. Yeah, thank you so much. And also let me share, there are Humanities Stream Plus members here with us, so Joanne, uh, has got a little heart on the screen. And by the way, any of you all that want to come on, if any of you want to come face to face on screen, uh, just uh, uh, raise your hand, let us know, and you can we can bring you on screen so uh, Jonathan and Andy can see you and you can see them. So just let us know. We're happy to do that here during this uh, program. Uh, so Joanne has, has got a little heart. She's sending love. Martha says, uh, what do you say to people who are shy about voicing or, or toning let me so and there's some other questions here too but let me walk that one and what that's a that's a very good question that martha has because especially if i mean if we're just sitting here alone in our room then this is a very easy thing to do but you do these things with large audiences all the time what, what do you say to people that are shy about uh, this in the public that's why we hum we have not found anybody who 
it says, I can't hum properly. Or, Everybody or I can just, hum. I'm not a good hummer. And, and honestly, that was such a beautiful question because I think that a lot of people can relate to that question. And that's one of the reasons that we do humming. And we also do toning with simple sounds of, you know, the sacred vowel sounds, the ah. You know, we do the ah sound every year on our World Sound Healing Day. And, you know, there's just those simple the the more simple I think you can keep your sounds, the easier it is to feel that comfort within yourself. And we just have not encountered, personally, having taught this to a whole lot of people, uh, we've never encountered anybody who said, I don't know how to hum or I'm not a good hummer. That's one thing because, Steve, everybody hums. Whether When we're happy, we hum. Humming is Humming is a, ha a happy sound. I think you may have been the person who said you can't hum when you're angry. And you are so right, my friend. <laughs> you can just be happy when yeah. you're humming. <laughs> Absolutely. Be happy when you hum. <laughs> nice ring to that. Yeah. And it just yeah. happens. So I'm sure everybody got that as we were humming along. It uh, You just you are in that high vibrational state. How could you be in worry and hum? <laughs> be very hard to do. Uh, let me come back now to other questions here from, from uh, viewers in the Humanity Stream Plus community. So Jennifer wants to know, she says, Steve mentioned uh, that you all, uh, Jonathan and Andy, you're part of the Global Oneness Summit this year. What, what is the theme you know, that you're sharing? You talked earlier about your panel. What, what is the theme of that panel is what she's asking. Oh, the panel is how to create global oneness using compassionate sound. I think the two are interrelated, and I think it may be one of the major keys. If you examine all the different traditions on the planet, you find that indeed working with sound that has is encoded with compassion is a major key. There are physiological reasons for that, including when you work with sound together, you have um, the release of oxytocin. And also, Andy. Well, and in and in the panel, of course, we have talked about uh, intention, you know, earlier here in, in the show today. But intention, the compa intention of compassion and utilizing that loving kindness and gratitude and having that be part of the sound opening up to oneness. And that really, I think, is the foundation of the uh, the panel. Sarah Benson. Well, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. And, and a llama, you know, so and there were other distinguished guests. So, um, wow. Uh, that's uh, be sure to bookmark this. So Global Oneness Summit, it's it's uh, October 16 to 24 this year. There, there are over 30 panels. There are over 70 speakers it's free you know the whole program so global oneness summit.org so i think we're still in the process of putting up this year's program uh you can i think right now it's mostly last year's program there because we're still here in august we're a ways out from the summit but bookmark those dates october 16 to 24 and don't miss jonathan and andy's panel uh it'll be fantastic now let me come in there's another question here from uh, a stream plus member and it's saul who says uh, to Jonathan and Andy, they said, do you ever sound with animals? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely we do. And animals, oh my goodness, they're these beings, these animals, they love sound. They love the frequencies of love and, you know, sounding specifically to our dogs, our cats, our birds, our fish. Our trees. <laughs> They're not animals, but the trees really like to be encoded yes. with the energy of compassion and love. Huge thank you to uh, Jonathan Goldman, Andy Goldman, uh, who are huge pioneers in sound healing and dear, dear people with so much wisdom and that have brought this whole uh, sound healing thing to the world. Uh, and as they mentioned, it's mainstreaming. Boy, you know, years ago it was what? Sound healing? You know, not so much now. Everybody's familiar with it. A lot of people are using it as tools. It's, it's such a beautiful tool. 
And I'm sure it's no accident that uh, here we are right now in August with all the things going on in the world that, that uh, Jonathan and Andy are here with us as reminders of, hey, you know, sound healing, use it, it's beautiful. And, and of course, I know everybody <laughs> felt that during the hour, uh, wow, I mean, so powerful. Uh, we were, I think this whole conversation has been on a very high frequency. And so, so thank you to my special guests for that. Truly uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, thank you to viewers. Thank you all for spending uh, quality time here with us. We've got another great program uh, next Friday. So uh, be sure to be here with us. Um, we, uh, I'll, you're, you're not gonna wanna miss next Friday's program. Um, uh, thank you to uh, viewers for spending quality time with us these, during these live programs every Friday. They're at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, 12 o'clock Mountain. Thanks for being with us. I uh, also want to thank this team here. We're going to pull the camera back so you can see the studio. Uh, and you'll see Jim Gray here right in the studio. There we go. There's Jim over there. There's me. So this is our uh, studio here in Boulder. So thank you. Jim Gray, uh, Noah, Karen Gordon, Dee Meyer, Nanette Kennedy, Garth Catterall. Uh, these are some of the people that make this program possible. So, and to viewers, uh, boy, you know, Jonathan and Andy's work, our work in humanities team, again, it's all about creating conscious living. Uh, this, is, this is really, I think, the invitation in life is to live consciously. This is where the fruit is, the real prosperity is. And hey, let's live this way uh, and journey into this future where the whole world is, uh, is conscious. And so where we bring uh, this whole container or culture that's conscious into our workplace and into all, uh, all spheres of life. That's, that's the the real invitation in life. And uh, uh, all, all of us probably are familiar with what was years ago where we were living more unconsciously, where it's all just this mental, emotional world with task lists and uh, that's, that's very, um, instead of being relational, it's very task oriented, um, where it's very transactional. Um, it's more independent as opposed to interdependent. Boy, you know, painful even to talk about that world. So. Uh, I'm sure all of us that are a part of this program, we're well down the path uh, to where we enjoy uh, things like relational living and interdependent living and high frequency living and so on. So, hey, let's keep journeying into the future. Let's make this future happen together. Thanks for being with us and peace and blessings, everybody. If you'd like to receive all of our new podcast episodes, please click on the subscribe button find out more about Humanities Team Transformational Education Programs and about how you can help support our mission, please visit us online at humanitiesteam.org, where you can also sign up for our email list so we can let you know about our free online events and other news about what we're up to each week. And again, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review. Thank you.